Hello and welcome to www.luxurytolast.com and also my sister site www.collectinglouisvuitton.com Today I want to talk about buying second hand and uh, this is particularly relates to watches and uh, many people have said to me look where do you buy your watches from and what's a good good advice for beginners and um, the best advice I can give you is never buy new okay buying new sucks I've uh, probably owned I'd say in the last uh, 15 years how many watches have I owned I've probably handled probably close to a thousand pieces and um, how many pieces have I actually bought new I have probably could count it on one hand and the reason for this is that if you buy new you're never going to get your money back very rarely um, the only exceptions to this the first watch the first luxury watch I ever bought was a Rolex 1016 I bought that um, from a client of mine who was a jeweler this is when I was was a young fellow I was also in business for myself at the time I said look just get me the cheapest Rolex you possibly can uh, and he got me a Rolex Explorer 1 plastic 1016 last of the the plastic Explorer ones and um, I think I paid about 1600 bucks for it and uh, I wore it every day and about 10 years later I sold it for about um, ten thousand dollars so that's that's a that's a positive story with buying new but I'll be honest with you there aren't many watches that you can do that with that was luck and uh, the only way you can really get ahead with watches is to buy used and uh, nothing wrong with buying used the the smart thing about buying used is that if you uh, do want to trade it or sell it if you buy shrewdly you can make money and if you've if you've bought it reasonably well you'd, 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 your loss is, is minimal and um, often I find with if you establish a good rapport with a, a watch dealer he'll buy it back at virtually what you paid because you're buying another piece from him so um, it's um, and, and the, the reason for that is is that obviously the dealer can trust his own stock if he sold you a piece he knows what it is he knows it's been serviced he knows it's been it's got the correct bracelet it's got the correct dial he knows it's all correct and uh, he, he, he sort of um, he definitely wants back good stock and uh, the only the only exception to this rule is stay away from dog watches I mean when I say dog watches that's models no one wants I mean uh, as, I, as I've said in my other videos there, stay away from the Abels, um, Bormann Mercier's, uh, any non, non-core non sort of brand watches there and um, you'll be fine. Um, as a good guide, if you have a look at my other video there, the 10 greatest watches of all time, there's pieces there, uh, value, very good value pieces, uh, like the, the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon, that's great buying second hand. Um, even in this climate now, there's some great Rolex buyers out there. And, uh, I mean, the economy, we've got the global financial crisis came through in 2007. And um, things are, you know, with the retail world there, things are up and down. And um, there's some great buying. At the moment, I would say Explorer 1 is a great buy. For Rolex sports watches... Well, at the moment, the ultimate buy, which is is a watch that I've just added to my collection, is the is the Explorer 2. It's great buying, and um, it's one of my favourite all-time sports Rolexes. And with the black or white dial choices, they're an absolute bargain. Now, the funny thing is, I was talking to my good vintage watch dealer the other day. I was thinking, well, maybe I'll buy a uh, a no-date sub. His advice to me was to uh, to buy. A beautiful Explorer 2, same money as a no date sub, and in my opinion, a Explorer 2 is much better than a no date sub. Uh, and I, I, uh, I bought a beautiful white dial um, Explorer 2, similar money to a Explorer, uh, sorry, similar money to a no date sub. And the the black dial is marginally more expensive, but I, I personally think the white dial is a is a nicer watch. I've had both versions and. Um, don't, don't don't get me started on white or black dial versions. What's a better? I think they're they're both pretty good, and uh, if you can get one at a slight discount, well, go for that. But um, no, that was good buying. So that that's that's uh, some excellent buys there. Believe it or not, the the GMTs are really hot at the moment. But I can remember when they were the dog of the Rolex sports ranges, and the 
the Explorer 2s were one of the the best, most desired watches out there. So it's it's these things change, and and um, I think buying an Explorer is not a bad watch at all. They're they're a great piece, and they'll they will continue to uh, to uh, get stronger if they're if they're low at the moment. Uh, basically, look, you've got to get a, a good relationship with a vintage watch dealer. Now, there's some excellent vintage watch dealers with bricks and mortar store. I'll tell you a couple that I've uh, used. Now, I'm not getting any kickbacks from these guys. These are just people I deal with. And uh, yes, they've become friends, but it uh, doesn't mean that I'm getting a commission. Maybe that might be an idea. I might ask them if I can get a commission for everything. Well, let's see how it goes. The first vintage watch dealer is a guy that I've known for many years, Time Man www.timeman.net now he runs a a, uh, a website overseas he's in he's in Asia and uh, excellent range he's he's got some be- he's had some beautiful pieces I'd say about out of my present collection there sixty um, percent of it's come from him and uh, my Patek Philippe 5107's come from him uh, the Cart- all the Cartier gold pieces that my wife has the the Banois the Diablo uh, and the Centura, that's all come from him. The Ladies' Date Just has come from him. Um, so a lot of stock has come from him. So please, um, please, uh, he's a great dealer. www.timeman.net Another dealer who's got a bricks and mortar store is Brisbane Vintage Watches. www.brisbanevintagewatches.com Ronnie's a, a great, great dealer there. I've bought a lot of pieces from him. Uh, my speedy my Amiga Speedmaster that came from him and I, I've, I've known him for years he's a great great dealer he's in Brisbane he's got a great shop and um, he's 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 really really good to deal with um, look what you've got to do is I, I would say your best thing to do is get recommendations from friends or colleagues and say look who do you know who deals in vintage watches because knowing a good vintage watch dealer is a great arsenal for the collector because as a collector you're often changing your stock for other pieces and if you've got a relationship going with with a dealer you can slide in and slide out of pieces and uh, look I understand they've got to make money we've all got to make money in this world but um, having a good relationship if, if, if you buy a piece from them they're more likely to take it back because they know it's a good piece and um, if you're buying another piece from them they'll be um, they'll be keen to to sell that piece and they will take it as a given that the piece you're trading is trouble free so it's always good to have a good relationship with a vintage dealer there. I've bought shrewdly pieces where I've actually even sold them back for more because the, the, the market was rising. Now we've got the global financial crisis. Prices aren't as, as, as good as they've been. And also in the Australian market, we've had the uh, Aussie dollar has reached parity with the US. So it sort of reevaluated a lot of pieces where a lot of Australians don't quite realize that it's affected the values of pieces but it but it has because the Aussie dollar now is one to one to the US and um, it makes the Aussie dollar so much stronger whereas it means it's cheaper to buy things in but if you're selling a piece your prices aren't going to be as as high because the Aussie dollar is so much stronger so it's, it's a bit a bit of a, a concept to explain to the novice but um, um, it's it's that's just how economics works so look my advice buying secondhand watches Get a good relationship with a, a dealer, and uh, the best way is to ask your friends or colleagues who do you know, who who's somebody you can trust, and um, go to them, and that they, they'll often a good dealer will guide you in better pieces to have, and they'll 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 tell you to stay away from things that are, are dogs, stay away from. They'll tell you which which pieces are the dogs, and um, they'll guide you, and uh, that's always a great way to go. So. There you have it. That's my advice. If you're wanting to to get a collection going, buy second hand. Don't buy new. And um, that way there you will will always come in front and uh, you'll be able to trade your pieces and um, get your money back. Okay, thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to come to my free website, www.collectinglouisvuitton.com and www.luxurytolast.com. Thanks very much.